Hi everybody, it's Monday again, but the live stream has uh, got the better of me today and it keeps throwing me out. So here I am just recording a video for you. I'm going to carry on with the theme of Peru. Um, last week I was talking about my ayahuasca experience. And I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what happened to me when I was out there because it wasn't just about the ayahuasca. That was a big part of it and it had a huge impact on me, but the rest of it was very interesting as well. Um, so from the jungle, I, I spent two weeks out there in, um, in the jungle learning from Matea, the shaman that was teaching me and experiencing the ayahuasca right on the edge of the Amazon and hearing all of their traditions and seeing how the indigenous people out there live. The reason I was able to do that um, and not just be a tourist, I was really um, involved in the whole environment of it, was because my spiritual teacher at the time, Viv, Vivian Kay, um, was a peace elder for the United Nations and Peru was her particular project. She was out there um, setting up schools in the villages and helping to educate the teenagers and helping to send them to university um, so that they were getting a look at the Western culture and access to a different type of education than the one they had in the jungle. Um, for me, the way they lived in the jungle was amazing. It was very simple. They were extremely happy. Um, although in our terms very very poor. So from from the Amazon jungle and Iquitos I then went to the Sacred Valley in Peru which is where Machu Picchu is. Machu Picchu uh, means uh, oh gosh what there's Machu Picchu and Wanyu Picchu and Wanyu Picchu is much higher and it means old peak old peak and Machu, Machu Picchu is new peak or new town can't quite remember the the translation I'm sure if you look it up, you'll find, find out what it is. Um, and I uh, trekked from Cusco to Machu Picchu up high in the Andes. It took a couple of days. Um, it's quite far. And I'm afraid of heights, although I wasn't on this occasion. Um, the pathways were the ancient Incan pathways that are still there. They're about a foot wide, uh, 12 inches, I think, oh gosh, 30 centimetres wide, and they're made of granite and they're often on the edge of a steep drop. The whole time that I was trekking um, across these mountains, not only was the scenery breathtaking, but I didn't once think I'm gonna fall or I'm afraid. And the reason I had that was it was the first time that I was completely aware of one of my guides. He stood by the edge of the pathway the whole way and walked with me. Um, I also found that I was surrounded by butterflies the whole time, so rebirth, creation, something new, and um, it filled me with hope. We were being guided still by um, a shaman, this time his name is Pedro, it's different, a different shaman has slightly a different way, and we had a Quechuan guide, someone that really knew the area. Um, and not just the tourist area, he was telling us all of the, all of the uh, in-depth little legend that, that they learn there, you know. Um, it, it really was a magical experience. And when we got to Machu Picchu, there's actually a photograph taken from the Sun Gate. So as you come down the trail, the Sun Gate is the first place that you can actually see uh, Machu Picchu. And it's about um, a thousand foot higher than Machu Picchu, so you're looking down. And there's a, I've got a photo of that on my, on my um, page, and I'll, I'll, I'll find it and, and post it on here later so you can see. You, obviously a photograph doesn't actually really uh, give you the whole impact of the place but it was breathtaking and what happened to me was that I had a recognition um, I was home so we carried on walking and we finally arrived at uh, the site of Machu Picchu and again because Viv is who she, who she is or who she was at the time in terms of um, Peruvian advocate we weren't surrounded by thousands of tourists. We'd gone there and we were able to be in Machu Picchu relatively alone. Um, and I found that as I was walking around, I knew where I was. So the guide, our Quechuan guide was saying, so this is the temple of, of the eagle and it does this. And, and I already knew what he was telling us. And then I had the most strange experience. At the top of Machu Picchu is a pyramid. Um, 
where the healers and the priests used to stay and used to live. There was little houses around this pyramid. And there's a sheer drop off the side where um, sacrifices were made. So we get up there and I've got this, this ever feeling of elation and I can really feel for the first time really such serious excitement and buzzing in my body. I talk about that a lot now when I heal people and I work with people is can you feel that vibration in your body? That's your life force. And this was the first time I was actually really feeling it bubbling up inside of me. And we get up to the, to the uh, pyramid at the top and it's like something came over me. I fainted completely cold unconscious um, and while I'm out I have an outer body experience I'm, I'm kind of up flying and looking down on myself I'd left my physical body um, the memory I had was actually of being one of those young sacrifices thrown off the edge no wonder I'm afraid of heights um, so that past life came back to me of being involved and living in an Incan empire in Machu Picchu and it was really amazing and it began to um, really embed the feeling of uh, spiritual truth in terms of being a healer and um, using shamanic ways in my work. So that was pretty amazing experience. We um, came away from Machu Picchu and went off on another journey down the Sacred Valley. There are many, many, many historical sites there. Um, and I was challenged often with heights from then on. Um, and then we went down to Cusco, which is the, uh, the old Quechuan capital of Peru before Lima was. Um, the Quechuan people and the Incan people used to say that Cusco was the belly button of the earth. It was, for them, the center of everything. Um, and it was a, a huge Hink, Incan town. When, a Spa, when the Spanish came, they, they kind of got rid of all of the artifacts and all of the temple Incan temples and put churches on top of most of the temples. So even though um, a lot of the architecture is Spanish and very Christian tradition, you can still see and get a sense of the old granite temples that were there. And... Um, the main site in Cusco is called Saxiwama, which means velvet head. Saxiwama um, is, was a huge, huge, huge site. When you go there, you get a feeling of it. And I, I do not know how the people then moved these great big granite sets. Some of them were as big, as tall as a house, and they aren't um, cemented together. They're mitered together, so they, the shape of the stone and gravity forces them together and makes a very firm structure. There's a little cave in Saxiwama and um, it's completely dark. One of the other fears that I had at the time, although not now, was I was afraid of the dark. Um, so um, Pedro, our shaman, led us into this cave without us knowing where we were going. As I said, I was travelling with a few, four other people. He in invited me to go first, so I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm going first, oh. and I'm very happy to follow him. But quickly it gets pitch black and you cannot see where you're going. And this cave, no joke, for me, was a little, I was really having to feel my way. And God knows what the big guy, you know, there's a really kind of big guy traveling with us, how he managed. Um, but what happened with me was I was full all of a sudden with fear, masses amounts of fear, and, and I could see red all around me. And for me, what happened was the, uh, the memory wipe that we all have when we're born here lifted. And I remember being born. I remember the promises I made when I came. And I was sobbing and crying, and I came out of that um, cave, and again fainted again <laughs> that was uh, that that trip was a uh, was one of of, a, of real um, highs and real feeling how it is to not be in my body and then feeling how it is to to actually really embody myself so again I'm outside my body looking down and Viv had come from she didn't come in with us she she was waiting for us out the outside and um, it took her her three times to actually get me to get back in my body because the memory that I had was I was coming to this life now and I'd made all these um, decisions in my spiritual journey um, and there was fear. Um, 
but that all left me as I as I left and I stood up and again I felt completely in my own power completely myself and I knew what I was going to be doing um, I am doing it now it's taken a while and this is this is part of my message is that you know where you're going when you know when you're going it all fits into place but our um, idea of time is not the same as the universe's time and space are relative what we're doing here is is we're working to overcome our feeling of separateness overcome our feeling of um, negativity which is something that we innately go to when things don't don't go go our way but just know that everything is as it should be I went to Peru at exactly the right time in my life to uncover my true self if I'd have gone sooner I don't think I would have been ready so hold that in your heart if you're struggling know that the struggle is the journey and if you can look at your struggle in a different way with a different perspective and take the pieces of information that you're learning and move through then it will be a whole lot easier for me for you I know that when I was in a period of real desperation I couldn't see that um, and I used to get quite cross with people when they said to me you'll be okay everything will be okay in the end um, because what I wanted was someone to actually take it all away from me but Taking things away means that you don't take responsibility and you don't stand in your own power. So move through your struggles and know that they are things that have come to teach you something so that you can actually really shine and be in your own self. Um, what I came away from Peru with was a whole new perspective on my life. I was never going back to who I'd been or where I'd been. I didn't know where I was going. I just knew my truth and that things were going to change. And I was reading something this morning and this little uh, quote came up and I, I don't know who said it, but I didn't, I read it. And it is that this too will change. So um, I'm gonna leave you today with the idea that we're all in the flow, the universal flow. We're all where we should be. And we are all creation. We are all part of the one. So uh, have a look around you. Give yourself a big hug because you're doing really well. And I hope that uh, me telling you a little bit more about my journey has helped you. And I'll be back on Wednesday and we'll be doing a healing thread again. And this time we'll be looking at our heart chakra, our heart center. I do hope you're enjoying that. Do hop on and let me know your feedback. And I will see you soon. Lots of love. Bye.